One of the last muscles that I mentioned in my previous video was the levator labii superioris muscle. Sometimes referred to as a zygomatic head of the levator labii superioris muscle is this muscle over here, the zygomaticus minor. Now zygomaticus minor is just like every other muscle of facial expression innervated by the seventh cranial nerve, the facial nerve. Here we see the zygomaticotemporal branch of the zygomatic nerve. And if you look a little bit more behind over here, we can see where it comes out of the facial nerve. The zygomaticus minor muscle is used to show the expression of sadness. Right next to it, you have the zygomaticus major, and because of different places of insertion of these muscles, the zygomaticus major is used to show the emotion of happiness. Now I know I keep saying zygomaticus, zygomatic, what is actually zygomatic? This bone over here, where the muscles originate, is the zygomatic bone. In other words, it's just a cheekbone. It is really important for you to differentiate a real smile from a fake smile. And because this is animated anatomy, we're going to explain you what is the difference between a fake and a real smile anatomically. You see, this muscle over here is the risorius muscle, and it retracts the mouth backwards, producing an insincere looking smile. That's a fake smile that looks somewhat like a person showing off his teeth or something rather than smiling. The reason for this is that it does not lift the upper lip and it does not affect the skin around the eye. That's why we have the zygomaticus minor and the zygomaticus major muscles to do that. They lift the upper lip and the crow's feet are created by the orbicularis oculi muscle. Remember when I mentioned that you can express concentration, sadness, or even angriness by pulling your eyebrows together? Along with that, you very often depress the corner of your mouth, and you do so by using the muscle called depressor anguli oris. Both of these muscles that I've just mentioned are innervated by the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve. This branch further innervates the depressor labii inferioris muscle over here, and the function of this muscle is to lower the bottom lip. What people often do when they make photos is make a duck face. And to create a duck face type of a photo, they use this muscle over here called the mentalis. This muscle is also innervated by the mandibular branch of the facial nerve. They also have to use the orbicularis oris muscle, which is innervated by the buccal branch of the facial nerve and partially by the mandibular branch of the facial nerve. Just because this expression reminds all of us now of duck face, it doesn't mean that's the only function of this muscle. It is sometimes known as the kissing muscle, and it is also used for playing of all brass instruments. So there is one more last thing that I want to mention before we move on to the next video and explain you the muscles of mastication. You see, when I wanted to explain the innervation here, I had to remove this muscle over here to show you the buccal branch of the facial nerve. So this muscle over here is the buccinator, and it has its origins on maxilla and mandibula. What this muscle does is to actually contract the cheek, and that way keep the inner cheek surface on the teeth and push the food between the teeth so it can be chewed. By keeping the food in the correct position when chewing, the buccinator assists the muscles of mastication. This muscle also aids whistling and smiling. And of course, the buccinator muscle is innervated by the buccal branch of the facial nerve. So now you know a lot about facial muscles. To learn about the muscles of mastication, click here. To watch my previous video, click here. If you like my lessons and want to purchase my software, then you can go to my website animatedanatomy.com. If you don't want to purchase it, then at least you can subscribe here for new free content that I release regularly on my channel. Thank you.